Hey, this is Davey Boy Smith Jr., and you're watching Ambi. Hey, everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Davey Boy Smith Jr. Hello. Hello, Alicia, and thank you for having me on. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing very good. Um, I've had a busy weekend of shows. I wrestled Friday in Montreal and then last night for Great North Wrestling and then here today for uh, What Culture. So yes, very good. Always uh, good doing shows. I've, I haven't been back out east here for, oh, it's been too long. So uh, really enjoying the time here and seeing, catching up with friends and looking forward to the show tonight this uh is a UK-based company for the evening show. So, uh, of course, my family lineage back in the UK is very strong. And I'm going back to the UK later this month, too, for some shows. So, looking forward to that, too. Yeah, tonight in Toronto is the Pro Wrestling World Cup. So, how are you feeling about what's to come? Uh, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm in the, probably the best shape of my life. Um, I've been doing all different kinds of training lately. And, uh, yeah, I feel good. I'm uh, feeling pretty healthy, which is... A main thing, you know, the body's got to be uh, as injury-free as possible. And um, I think that I have a good chance of getting into the finals. And hopefully I'll walk away with the World Cup and we can celebrate afterwards if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so you're feeling fairly confident because there's some pretty big competition going into this. Tyson Dukes, Michael Elgin. Yeah, Michael Elgin. He's, uh, he's currently working for New Japan Pro Wrestling as well as myself. Um, He's really come into his own the past couple of years, and uh, he's become a, definitely a force to be reckoned with in there. And he's got a lot of power moves, and he, he hits really hard. So hopefully if uh, I can get past the first round here against uh, Frankie, I'll be able to uh, butt heads with him literally tonight. So, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of uh, – Zack Sabre Jr. is here tonight. He's another guy from the U.K., I'll actually be teaming up with him uh, when I go to the UK in a couple of weeks. So that'll be interesting. And, you know, who knows, maybe we'll go in the ring tonight, too. I love how different cars, different federations, you're yeah. still always seeing the same faces. That's right. That's right. Yep. Well, wrestling, of course, has been in your life for a very long time with your father, the heart. So when <laughs> you think back to the beginning, what is your first memory of it? You know what? Um, I can't. I can't really pinpoint it. I just, it's always been, I've always just been around it, you know. And, uh, you know, it would have been some of the early memories of watching uh, my dad and Dynamite Kid versus the Heart Foundation on TV. So it would have been something like that. And, and of course, being up at my grandfather's house. But um, those would be the earliest memories. Well, when you were 10, a photo of you and Kevin Nash actually made it oh, into yeah. WWF yes. magazine. You must yep. have totally freaked out when you were a kid seeing that. Well, yeah, it was uh, it was it was a really neat uh, article that we did. Uh, Kevin's a really cool guy. I got to see him again a couple years ago, um, and he, uh, yeah, man, you know, it was it was a unique, different inter interview. I think it showed me flexing my bicep or something <laughs> at uh, at ten years old. So yeah, it was it was uh, it was good. I mean, he was my gosh, he was huge back then. Like especially just looking up, being a little kid, right? So. I could see the differential yeah. in the, oh in the my photograph gosh. Yeah. that was sent out. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're currently learning Japanese. So Hi, Nihongo, Nihongo o Benkyo Shitemas. What was that? Uh, I'm learning to speak Japanese. Okay. Yukuri, slowly. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, uh, I, I, uh, I do know how to speak Japanese. Uh, I can get around with it, but um, the thing is, I, I haven't actually learned how to read a lot of this stuff because they have... Uh, kanji, katakana, and hiragana for their three different caricatures. So reading it, and I got Rosetta Stone um, more to read it and to start, because I mean, I've been going to Japan forever, but I don't know how to speak sentences. I know how to order food and get around pretty much, but I want to, because I, of course I love Japan, right? Um, I want to be able to embrace their culture more and uh, be able to communicate with uh, people there better because I have lots of friends over there. And it's just, it's one of those things that, especially you would probably know when you're traveling, you know, there's a lot of time to kill. So, you know, why not use up that free time with doing something productive? productive. And it's fun. It's not like, oh, I'm reading this boring book just because I got to read it. It's like, oh, I'm going to learn Japanese. I'm going to learn some new words today. I'm going to learn, you know, um, Maybe some bad words today, you know. <laughs> I find uh, I always start with the bad ones. Yeah, yeah. Learning a language. Yeah, so it just it's fun, and uh, I'm learning it, and I'm picking up on it quickly. So, 
And my friend Yuki Ishikawa is coming tonight. He's uh, the head trainer for Santino's Battle Arts Gym. Okay. He's a good friend of mine, so I'm hoping to impress him and we can talk later and, you know, talk about training and stuff, and hopefully I can impress him with my new, uh, my new Japanese. If you were to teach me something, something even simple, like I love wrestling, how would you say that? Uh, pro res, uh, ski des, which is, uh, I like pro res, pro wrestling. Um, you know, that would be, uh, or if I said pro res, pro res ski des ga, which would be, do you like pro wrestling? Okay. And you say hi, uh, you know, you know, hi, that's just hi? yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Yes. And, uh, that would, uh, yeah, that would be, uh, actually I could say karashimasuka. Karashimasuka? Karashimasuka. Karashimasuka. Do you know what that means? I have no idea. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> ah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that's is what it means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciate the lesson. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah. The other day somebody brought you an action figure of yourself. You yes. You have seen for quite some time. Do yeah. Do you often get cool fans like that from gifts? Uh, gifts like that from fans. Yeah, you know what? Oh. It, was, it was really neat. Um, I just, over the time, like I... I it seems like yesterday I had a whole bunch of those action figures just laying around the house. And over time you end up giving some away and then you move and you lose one or it's, there's some sitting in a box somewhere you don't know. So I hadn't seen that one in like ages and it was really neat and he asked me to sign the front of it. And uh, he, he kept it of course, but I, I didn't mind signing it for him. And it was, yeah, it was really neat. He, uh, I mean, the, the limbs and stuff were really loose so he was definitely playing with it a lot. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it was cool to see, you know, I appreciate fans, that, like really, um, fans that are really serious and that they're, they really love the sport and they like to collect things. They're like in Japanese, you could say otaku, which is not like nerd, but they are like collect collectors okay. of things, otakus. Um, so yeah, it was, it was cool. You know, it was neat to see and. You know, I was flexing with my figure. You probably saw yeah, on the Twitter. Yeah, yeah. And you had the red pants. Yeah, I, I was wearing these You're pants. Matching yeah, with yeah, the it was matching. Just my hair changed. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you have a bulldog, of course, named Joanna. Yeah. You also have a cat named Rocky Bobby. Yes, yes. Um, unfortunately, Joanna passed away. Oh, when, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, she passed away when I was in Japan recently, and she had a bad uh, cancer issue, and um, it was just a really lousy thing, and. Uh, we were trying to do chemotherapy for her and stuff before I left, and um, she wound up uh, not really, um, not not really responding. Mm, to yeah, it. not really responding. And she was uh, how could I say she was getting sick from it. Yeah. So and when I went to Japan, she one one day she just uh, my mom came by to check on her and she was next to my bed and she would just pass. So it was really too bad. I I don't know if I would like to get another bulldog just. Yeah, because I'm really busy, and bulldogs, they're awesome animals, but they just, they take up, uh, they're, they, they have a lot of ailments and stuff, and they don't live long, unfortunately. But I was thinking about maybe getting a Tosa Inu, okay. which is a Japanese, it sounds funny, but... Uh, no, but is it a breed, like it's a, a breed? It's a Japanese fighting dog, but okay. they're, the, they're the sweetest, very nice dogs. They're actually kind of like me. They're very big, like very high, and they're very long. And they're very nice dogs, but they're really good guard dogs. And they're good with children. They just have to be um, managed from when they're a puppy. But they're a lot different than pit bulls, but they're actually more dangerous than pit bulls. And that's why they're, they're, very, they're, they're hard to get because uh, you have to take care of them from when they're little because okay. they're bred to be fighting dogs. They're the like killers, uh, but they're the nicest dogs. But my, my cat, Rocky Bobby, it's actually his birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, yes. Rocky Bobby. Yes, and so my, uh, my mom found him because she saw him got hit by a car in, in Florida. And, she, uh, and he was just a stray cat at the time. And then she, it was Mother's Day. So she took him into the vets. And they, he barely survived, and she ended up keeping him. And, uh, and he was just a little thing at that point. And he's, man, he's really grown. He's huge. And he's a little bit of a pest, but um, he's on a steady, healthy diet of uh, the uh, some of his cat treats, and he likes uh, chunko nabe, which is the Japanese sumo hot pot I make. Okay. Yeah, he likes to. You know, he whines when he doesn't get that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is cooking something you like doing when yeah, you're downtown? Yeah, I, I do. I do. I like cooking a lot. I uh, well, I like cooking Japanese food actually. Uh, I in and. 
I like to experiment with different things when I'm cooking with uh, my chanko. I can make mizu, shoyu, and salt-based um, uh, uh, bases for the soup base. And then I like to experiment with different things, different uh, ingredients inside of there. And chanko nabe is actually, it's a sumo hot pot. But the thing is, is that it actually is used, and you want to think, oh, you're eating sumo food, that means you're going to get fat. Well, not necessarily. The thing that why sumo wrestlers actually get, f uh, f not fat, but the way they put on their size, they actually put on the fat and the amount of uh, weight um, outside of their organs. So it's not, uh, it's not visceral fat. And people that are unhealthy, that are fat, they're, a lot of their fat is in between their organs mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's harder to get rid of, whereas theirs is built on the outside of their organs. Okay. Yeah, so that's a help. That's a tip. And then they eat an exorbitant amount of chanko nabe and a huge amount of white rice. And then they, right after they eat, they go to sleep. So that's and that's why a lot of people don't like to eat right before they go yeah. to bed because that's oh, okay. Well, it's well, how am I going to burn this off, mm -hmm. right? So that's why. So I chanko nabe. The ingredients in it really is like vegetables, carrots, green onions, uh, cabbage, napa. Uh, different kinds of Chinese cabbage, taro root sometimes, um, chicken, fish. Uh, you can add pork, but I don't really eat pork anymore. Um, and uh, noodles, tofu. I love tofu, very high in protein. And, uh, you know, there's nothing really unhealthy about all of that. And it's a great stamina food for, especially after you're done training, to eat that and get those kind of nutrients. And it's very... Uh, nutritive and then I, I and another thing I change with mine is that I'll eat white rice with it sometimes but I eat couscous a lot okay. because couscous is actually um, said to be the perfect carbohydrate because it doesn't uh, tra turn into fat after any of it and a lot of carbohydrates they turn into fat which then and then turns into sugar so but couscous is the only one that doesn't um, so that's I choose to choose to do that and I just I stick to usually one uh, carbohydrate like on the side kind of like the Gracie diet I just don't mix a lot of starches and carbohydrates now I'm super hungry thanks yes uh, <laughs> we'll have to do some yeah. kind of like cooking if show you, next if you if you come if you come to Calgary sometime I'll make it for you <laughs> Seriously, yeah it sounds yeah so for good. sure yep absolutely well, I just want to do a quick fire round with you. So you just okay. say whatever comes to mind first all right one word or uh, as many as you want whatever okay comes first you ready yeah, I'm right. ready. What's the wallpaper on your phone? It's black. Who would you love to face that you've yet to? Uh, ooh. Junakiyama, Masa Funaki, Kurt Angle. What's the worst or most boring job you've had? Mm. Ooh, I had to rip up some floors once when I was uh, 16 for a guy, and uh, it, was, it was just boring. It was hot, really, really hot in the, in the place, and there was a ton of mosquitoes. Boring and not fun. <laughs> if you could have any band or artist write a theme song for you, which would it be? Queen. Okay. Yes. And then if you could see any band live, which would that be? Uh, Queen or uh, I, I like Billy Idol a lot too. Okay. Yep. Nice. Yep. Let's wrap things up. Is there anything you would like to leave with your fans who will be viewing? Just any parting words for those watching? Well, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, any fans that are out there, you can follow me on Twitter at DB Smith Jr. And you can follow me on Instagram at DB Smith Jr. as well. Thank you very much for all your support. Um, for those of you that are watching this, uh, there's some of my matches you can watch on YouTube. And um, for my fans in Japan, I love you guys very much. I'll see you all very soon. Arigato gozaimasu. Gambate. I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It is my pleasure. And remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. Boom. See you.